G'day guys, Mac with the Our Circle, and today I want to talk about all these different games, starter sets, boxes, and some thoughts I've sort of been having on it, and some things I've discussed with our community. So, in the previous video I've done, uh, the one where I looked at the Nova Open, I talked about the different previews and different games coming out in box sets and that kind of thing, and how with the release of Aeronautica, I feel like we just got way too many things going on at once. So I sat down and just sort of put together a rough grouping of the different games that have come out in the last sort of year or two. This is what I've got. This is a lot of products to support. Um, now I won't say they've been doing a bad job of support. I think they've been doing pretty good, but basically it boils down to three monthly releases for everything outside of the main core games, which are obviously 40k and 30k. Oh, wait, no. 30k is a nothing game. It's 40k in Age of Sigma. So, where do I start here? Um, okay, Lord of the Rings is probably the most logical. That used to be sort of seen as a core game roughly equal with say uh, 40k or uh, uh, sorry uh, fantasy back in the day and the problem is is that well Lord of the Rings really didn't get support for about a good five or six years there if not more that's its own other story but they're getting support again now which is great but it's very much shrunk down to a secondary game or specialist games, side product, whatever. In fact, I really don't feel that specialist games is really a title worth having at this point because they're more like just skirmish games or adventure games. I think there needs to be some sort of new delineation, but that's neither here nor there. Some executive will probably come up with that idea later on and get paid a fortune for the idea. Uh, so yeah, Lord of the Rings obviously was a huge game, still got a lot of models out there, but the support for it now is very much getting that sort of, here's a couple of characters every month or two or whatever. It's not really great. Um, but they did get, you know, a new box set, they get an expansion soon, which is right in line with the time frames we're seeing for other box games. The sort of oldest of these being Blood Bowl. Now, Blood Bowl has followed this sort of typical formula you see for your skirmish level games, which I would say is Necromunda, uh, Titanicus, maybe. Well, we get to see what happens with Warcry, and Shadow Wars Armageddon's kind of dead, but we'll say Kill Team. So, this is the games that. Uh, they have an initial release, you get your starter set with your two different factions in it and then from there you get sort of your different season or your different um, update, rules manual, whatever. Approximately every three months to six months there's some sort of new major content for it. Uh, for example if you go with Blood Bowl you initially start out with maybe half a dozen factions rules but only two factions released in the initial box. When the update finally comes, it'll bring you another four or so factions. Uh, it'll also bring a bunch of other rules along. When I spoke to people about this on our Facebook recently, well, in fact today, the time of recording, everyone seemed to be of the opinion that we want more of the actual playable factions and their units during the initial release. To try and flesh out the game more, rather than relying on giving us sort of very slow trickles down the line and I mean people will go oh Necromunda's had great product support it has but think about it it's been out for about two years nearly off the top of my head I mean we get one specials game roughly every year so Blood Bowl was about three years ago or so and then Titanicus and then sorry Necromunda then Titanicus so Necromunda we're up to like five or six main gangs uh, plus the enforcers plus a few other odds and ends, that's really not that much content over a couple of years, is it, when you think about it, knowing that two of those factions was released when the game was as well. So, yeah, and I don't really know that you can call the individual character releases major content either from Forge World, 
because I mean it's only relevant if you're actually using said character and it's a character that's very faction specific so it's not really adding too much content beyond the existing faction you may possess again worth noting of course there are other characters that are outside of that scope uh, that anyone can use and that's a different kettle of fish but the overall actual releases for Necromunda you're probably only looking at maybe a hundred models over two years once you factor in different sculpts and that kind of thing, it's not really that much. And that is the same with Blood Bowl. When you look at Titanicus, it's also got this whole, here's a couple of models in the initial box set, and then we're going to very slowly triple down some content over time. And what's happened is we've got a couple of different knights in that time frame. Uh, a couple of different Titan weapons, but no new Titans themselves. No Warhound uh, variants, no Reaver variants, uh, like I said, no White Warlocks, uh, no Imperators, no Warmongers, no Nemesis Titans, uh, any of that kind of thing. So, eh, it'll come. The question is how long, how many months is the game supposed to rely on? Basically, here is the existing set of Titans, say Reavers, Warhounds, Warlords. And the options of weapons is pretty much your customization available to you until such time as they can be bothered bringing out more stuff and they're hoping that it will tide you over, I don't know. But it's interesting to see how long from when something comes out as to when it actually gets some sort of major content updates. In fact, I actually just paused the video during recording for a moment just to double check. It was a year ago that Titanicus was released. So there you go, in one year we've got a couple of the Forge World style knights and a few weapon upgrades and that's pretty much it from the initial release. So how long will it take to fully flesh out the game with say six different types of titan instead of just three? They haven't even released a fourth titan yet. So who fucking knows right, not me, clearly. Uh, Corresponding with that yearly releases, so it was Necromunda the year before that, Blood Bowl the year before that, we've now got Aeronautica Imperialis. Hmm, what have we got here? Two factions, fuck all content in the box. What's this going to mean down the line? Well, I'd say very quickly there's going to be a release of another faction, and then nothing for about three months. That's the pattern. Now... Let's step away from those couple of games and look more at our adventure games like Warhammer Quest, Blackstone Fortress, Warcry. Alright, now there's another one that could sort of be added in here, um, and that's of course Shadow Spire or Warhammer Underworlds, which is not currently on this list. Probably should be, the more I think about it, but I just, for whatever reason, decide to leave it off. That's an interesting game in and of itself. But these box games essentially revolve around their release it, and then they release either a very small pinch of new content, like say Ambles or Ambots. And then they just don't touch the game. They just no, it's it's its own thing and they just leave it alone and then a couple years later they supersede it with a different version of essentially the same product. So again. Okay. Warhammer Quest, and then you'll get Warhammer Quest Shadows over Harrenhal. And the previous box just fucking gets Thanos snapped and disappears into dust. That sort of happened with Shadow Wars Armageddon as well, which was, a, it was this big release, it was all over the press, uh, in games workshops, uh, blogs, and that kind of thing about how great this new Shadow Wars Armageddon is. And everyone was like, oh, it's like bringing back Necromunda. Oh, but it's kind of like Kill Teams, but it's not. And then they bought out Necromunda several months later anyway. And you're like, well, what the fuck was Shadow Wars Armageddon then? I guess it was just an excuse to sell some 20 year old boy in scout sculpts. I don't know. Um, but essentially, the people who paid for that got. They didn't really get their money's worth, because I don't think there's too many people who were. Uh, got a thriving Shadow Wars Armageddon community, uh, especially being just so heavily overshadowed by Necromunda, which is just the better game. Or Kill Team in general, which is you can use existing factions, existing miniatures 
very easy for people to get into and I understand the appeal of it. And I suppose what I'm getting at after sort of dissecting all these hundred different things is that there's too much going on with too little content. Like if you actually just follow just one of these games and watch the actual amount of content dribbling out for it, it's fucking nothing. But because Games Workshop is so consistently releasing products, it looks like a huge level of content being released. In fact, sorry I had to pause that again for the moment. In fact, Necromunda, which I just checked on, came out in November of 2017 and currently has just 25 products listed in the Games Workshop web store most of which are duplicates of the various rule books available for the game. Uh, the EPUB version, the iBook version, the uh, hardback version, etc. So it's like three versions of each book, there's like four different books, straight away there's half the product range available. It's a huge amount of shit, basically. That means there's only 13 current products on there. Of those 13 current products, half of them are things like dice and cards for the various factions. So realistically, in two years, there's only about maybe five actual uh, usable units that have been released for that game. And I'm guessing that would be sort of Delac, Cordor, um, Escher, Enforcers. That's pretty much it. Then you go over to Forge World and it's like, oh, 45 products for Necromunda. That's pretty good. And then you realize, oh, hang on a minute, it's just heads. Weapons, heads, weapons, heads, weapons, uh, heads and weapons with the plastic kit from Games Workshop. And you realise it's like one set of products that you could just buy, like the heads and weapons. And the gang, you could, that could just be one purchase right there. And that's a bundle option. Then there's also a heap of individual character, character in a box or in a bundle with two other characters, or all the different characters in a bundle, for example. And then all of a sudden you realise only about 13, 14 actual bits of content from Forge World. Uh, and a lot of it's like single individual models. So all of a sudden it's like, hang on a minute, there's not really that much content here. And people will turn around, I know this, and say, Necromunda's received heaps of support. Has it? I don't know, I'm not buying it. I don't think roughly 20 kits relating to the entire game many of which are individual characters where again we're only talking about five different games here that have been released in the entire time frame of this game on top of the initial two in the starting set that's fuck all content realistically because it's being dragged out it's being strung out the resources perhaps aren't there uh, to fully service the game because again it's forge world looking after all of these games except for 40k and age of sigma I haven't even got Horus Heresy on this list, because Horus Heresy doesn't even have the pleasure of having a starter set of some description. And I mean, if I was being realistic here, the Titanica starter set and the Shadow Wars Armageddon should both be scratched off this list, because they're no longer sold by Games Workshop. You can buy the individual kits, or the individual models, perhaps the rules. I think Shadow Wars is completely gone. Um, but the rest of Titanicus, for example, can be bought individually, just not as a big bundle. So, what am I getting at? I know I'm going in roundabouts and circles here. There's just too much going on. There needs to be some sort of simplification of these rules, keeping the same basic set of rules, stats, character creation, whatever, simplifying it down so that different game systems can use a variant of the same rule set rather than their own unique rule set would be great to see. Um, but perhaps that's not viable, I don't know. But I know, the one thing I do know for certain, from talking with other hobbyists, other gamers, is that everyone pretty much agrees they would rather get the equivalent of the first year or two's worth of content in the initial release, and then six to twelve month wait before new content is released. People, on average, seem to say they'd be a lot more patient if they got front-loaded with a lot of options. The problem is, is that they don't know what's coming next. And I think this is what Games Workshop's banking on, is that people go, oh, you know, I want to collect, say, uh, Necromunda. And, oh, I can't wait to collect um, an 
I don't know, an Enforcer game. And then they buy Necromunda back in 2017. And it's like, they've got Goliath, they've got Esha, they don't play either of those games. And now what, they're going to sit on the game for a couple of years? Or are they just going to start playing with what they've got? Yeah, they probably start playing with what they've got. Maybe they buy some other miniatures and try and convert them. Meanwhile, Games Workshop's just raking in all the cash. I know it's a very cynical approach, but I do believe this is genuinely what happens. People start playing forces they may not be interested in just because they have them and they've bought them and what they want just hasn't come along. The opposite of this is also true that people may simply say, well, because they haven't got what I want, I'm just not going to touch it at all. I know this is a big problem with Horus Heresy, where people went, eh, it's... They haven't got my faction, you know, Dark Angels, I guess, is the one really outstanding faction now. And so people just are like, eh, until that faction comes on, I'm not going to touch the game. And then maybe something else catches their eye. I don't know. Um, it's rough. I, I really don't know the answers, but it's just something I've been musing about, which is why I created this video. It's not to take an actual shot at Games Workshop or a stab at them of any kind. Um, it's just, there is a lot of products here, a lot of different games, all needing support, and the only ones that are really getting quantity support is 40k and Age of Sigma. And even then, even then, I've covered this in previous videos again, look at Age of Sigma. For the perfect release cycle, every faction is identical. You get a troops box that can usually be assembled in one of two different ways. You then get a sort of cavalry unit, you get a couple of special characters and then you get some sort of uber character who can usually be assembled in a couple of different ways and he's usually riding some kind of like large creature and they're like the real centerpiece that you build the army around so it could be like the uh sea elemental elf dude that the uh Isherin fish people got uh the adult deepkin that is uh, it could be the new character who looks like a prometheus engineer coming out with the Assyriac skeleton dudes um, someone had a go at me for calling it Syriac, asked me if I can de deliberately misspell it. Uh, I'm just going off what I think the spelling is, and I don't really care, <laughs> to be honest. Um, Cyrus is the god of the underworld in Egypt. So, well, not Osiris, sorry. Anubis was the god of the underworld. Cyrus was killed, and then had to be reassembled by his wife Isis, whatever. Um, so I was just going off that pronunciation. If I'm wrong, I don't give a shit. But anyway, what a red herring that point was. <laughs> uh, there's a centerpiece model, cavalry unit, an infantry unit, uh, some sort of like monstrous creature or siege unit, like trebuchet, catapult, that sort of thing. And that's pretty much it. That's the initial release. Think about it this way. How many releases have you seen for the Adonis Deepkin since they came out? What about the Fire Slayers? What about the, uh, who are the whalers on the moon? The Caradon Overlords, okay? How many releases have you seen for those factions since they initially dropped? And how much stuff dropped with those factions initially? I would say you'd be lucky to get into the double digits. And if you took out uh, same box, multiple sculpt options, you'd probably be down to single digits, like five or six different kits. So that's their sort of business model currently is just release a really small initial thing to try and hook people in and then just don't give any fucking support to that faction for a very long time of course 40k kind of replicates this as well think about the primaris marines what was the initial release for primaris marines if you take away the lieutenants you drop from like triple digits down to probably seven kits something like that i could think of uh primaris marines with bolt guns Primaris Marines with plasma guns, Primaris Marines in not Terminator armor, Primaris Marines who are not jump troops. Then you've got uh, Gravius armor and captain, and you've got a couple of tenants on foot, a librarian, chaplain, and a floating land raider. It's pretty much just 10 models, 10 different kits there. Uh, and some of them, like the floaty boys, had double assembly options. There's really not that many. Um, and then later on, of course, we've now had another wave of Primaris releases. So things like the Reavers and that guy. Sorry, the Reavers were also in that initial release. My apologies. So very small factions are being released. Maybe not even viable armies. You see a lot of doubling up of the same units. People trying to maximize on one very efficient unit, I've noticed. 
this seems to be what's happening, and I find it very strange. And ultimately, as I said, there's no real point to this video today. I'm just like, huh, this is weird. What is going on here? Uh, do I think this is viable long term? Uh, that's the big question, because as a consumer, this is the worst possible outcome for me. Because I'm like, no, I want all the shit I need to play the game up front. I don't want to have to buy a game, a course set with rules, and then have to supplement those rules every three months with a new booklet in order to cover off any potential new faction, sub-faction, unit, whatever that comes out. That's really inefficient. I don't want to have to be playing a really simple game, like, for example, Necromunda, and then have to rock up with like five or six different books to play a game with ten models. All I should be bringing is ten models to this. Same sort of thing happens with these other games. This whole season one, season two, whatever. And even that would be bearable, having to bring along all these different books, if they were cheap. They are not cheap. <laughs> they are really expensive. A lot of these books can be half the cost of the actual boxed starter set games. That is not worth it for something that gets superseded continuously. And then of course there's that turnover period where everything that came before gets massively superseded. Uh, a great example of that is when you go to a new edition of say Space Marine Codex. Look at 40k, the Primaris Marines. You had an index released at the start of 8th edition, which had all the rules for Space Marines, but missed a few things. Then you had a codex released, but that also missed a few things and had a lot of typos and needed an FAQ on day one, an errata on day one. And then you had to supplement it with that index, and then there was chapter approved. And in the end, it ended up at something like five or six different books just to play your fucking Primaris Space Marines. And then they bring out another codex just recently. That's like, so all those different indexes and things like that that were expensive have gotten superseded. This is terrible as a consumer. This is not what you want. What you want, or if you're anything like me, and hopefully have a bit of common sense in my opinion, you want an initial release that gives you a rounded faction. Something that can be added to later, yes. But something that is very rounded and covers off in all sort of areas at the start uh, if you're playing something like 40k. You don't want to have just, here's four units for your army. No, you want to have like ten units for your army, not even including the characters, so that you can actually play around, have a bit of variety in it. And then, sure, they can add new units later on. That's no problem. That's been, basically, their business approach in the past. And when it comes to the box games, something like Necromunda should have released with all the core games. And then you don't have to release anything for it for a good 12 months. They can spend that next 12 months working on content for other games. And people will be like, yeah, that's cool, because I've got my initial games. This is great. Anyway, interested to see where it goes, and more interested than anything else, just to hear what other people have to say about this sort of phenomenon. Really curious what they think. Um, do you think that this approach is viable? Do you think that there's too many games, box games, being released at once? Do you think it's the right amount? Do you think their release cycle is good? I'm just curious. Let me know in the comments. Um, and I will cover back on this later on. Anyway, Mac the Outer Circle, thank you all for watching this video. And I'm going to America at the end of the week. And I'm hoping, if I'm lucky, before that to release my Space Marine movie video. Uh, but the editing has been a nightmare. I can only sort of edit small portions at once before the computer gets the shits with me, probably about five minute chunks. And then I have to finish editing them, uh, render them, process them, and then I have to splice them together with other segments and try and make a whole video out of it. It has been a real pain in the ass, which is why it's taken so long. And there's been quality drops in some sections where I've had to go back and re edit the whole thing from scratch. That's painful. <laughs> Anyway, thanks, and I'll see you next time.